This is The Weekly Set, the official podcast of TVEnthusiast.com. With your host, Tyson Gifford and William Rower. Episode 115, recorded July 6th, 2017. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekly Schmidt, the official podcast of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Actually, this is The Weekly Set, the official podcast of TVEnthusiast.com. But today, for our 115th episode, we are going to be focusing entirely on Season 3 of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. So, to get started, I am your host, the Editor-in-Chief of TV Enthusiast. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime, William Rorick. Hello. As I mentioned, Today, we're talking pretty much exclusively Kimmy Schmidt, besides our usual end-of-the-show breakdown stuff about what's coming up in the week ahead. But besides that, it's all Kimmy Schmidt. So we're going to be talking about the whole season of Season 3, so if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want anything spoiled, then this is your cue, because we're just going to be going through the entire season. Let's kind of start things off at the beginning. So last season ended with the Reverend calling Kimmy, and... uh, uh, we found out that what that is is that he wants to get a divorce because he's seeing another woman um, right. and, and he wants to marry her in prison. Kimmy kind of takes the immature approach to that, which is instead of just granting him his divorce and getting like clean of him and not having to deal with him anymore, she's like, it's kind of like an, a chance to hurt him back. And so she starts just really just screwing with him, <laughs> with him sending the, uh, the divorce papers and her reaction to that. Right. Yeah. Basic, basically, she's, co- she's convinced to just, to just fuck with him and to not give him the divorce. And, and basic, and basically, while, while she's doing that, she wants to go back to, uh, she, Kimmy, Kimmy gets the idea to go to college and mm-hmm. she, and she wants to learn to be like a traffic, uh, like a traffic controller or <laughs> was that, uh, uh, no, she wanted to be a, a crossing guard. She had crossing that, guard, she, yeah, that's right. I don't think that's what she was going to school for, was it? She was going to school for... No, that's what she was literally going to school for. Or that's what <laughs> she originally wanted... Originally, she, she yeah. intended to go to school for, because, cause the, because the career thing told her that that's what, that's what she recommended, that that's what she's good at. <laughs> <laughs> so she ended up, while she was going to a, a community college... She met a guy who's become like a new love inter- uh, interest for her, a guy named Perry, who got her interested in philosophy and found out that he was going to be going off to Columbia. Right. And so she was kind of a little upset because she had just kind of made a friend with him and then he's going to be going off to Columbia and she's like, you know, now in the school and she lost the one friend that she had going into the, into the school. So that's what Kimmy's doing kind of at the beginning of the season. At the same time, at the beginning of the season, um, you have Jacqueline, uh, Kimmy's old boss, who has, uh, uh, you know, encountered a man, uh, a lawyer, that she's kind of become David fascinated Cross. with because he's, yes, David Cross plays the, the character. Russ. Russ Snyder. Yes. And she kind of becomes a little enamored with him. He's, he's gross. They kind of like, they play on that constantly. That, well, like, they play of, on like, unfortunately, he, everything he, about them. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like this gross, he, sad, sad sack. You know, like, he looks like David Cross. So, you know, <laughs> if, if you know what David Cross looks like, then, then you, you, you got the idea so you know he's not handsome uh he's <laughs> they really you know, play it I up mean, though like they, they make it seem like he smells and he has like all sorts of conditions and issues and yeah like like he's just like really pathetic but like he like he like he's this unusually he's this unusually friendly caring person at the same time mm-hmm. and something about that fascinates jacqueline Jacqueline tells herself, you know, she's she's only in it for Russ's money because Russ is rich. 
you know and and you know after after divorcing from her husband she's she's been she's been looking to to attach herself to another rich man in order to in order to keep up being being rich <laughs> which you know her her status has been in jeopardy ever since she ever since her divorce so that's the the original reason she goes for Russ or so she tells herself is because he has money um but it's it's his humanity that's kind of like actually starting to attract uh that she's starting to become attracted to him for right exactly that's so that's kind of the beginning of Jacqueline's story this season Titus we knew last season was going to be performing on a cruise ship the first time we see him he's like washing up on a beach <laughs> and he is just kind of like a mess something bad happened on the cruise ship that we don't really know about yet at this point and he comes back into town Titus is like try try basically trying to hide what happened on the cruise ship yeah you know? and uh yeah and and he's come back and and another thing is he's avoiding seeing Mikey his boyfriend um mm -hmm. Because he he's insecure about about where they are since Titus has been away from him for so long. Yeah, so he's kind of like he's he's kind of doesn't want to uh, uh, present himself because he doesn't want to show up as like a failure for being back so early. So he's kind of nervous about that, and that's kind of where Titus is in the beginning of the season. Lillian, on the other hand, finally breaks up with Robert Durst in a very anticlimactic way. Uh, <laughs> she she breaks up with him and he's just like okay and like walks away <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that kind of like bugs her that, that he, he was kind of able to get over it so yeah, early kind of... and so that's kind of what's dominating her story at the beginning well Lillian's uh, story Lillian's story she ends up uh, she ends up running for a seat seat on the city council because she doesn't want she... stuff to change that... in the neighborhood yeah she doesn't want she, get, she gets really adamant about not wanting stuff to change in the neighborhood and she gets really fixated on preventing this, uh, this kind of this Whole Foods, this, uh, this Whole Foods grocery chain place, yeah. <laughs> analogous to Whole Foods, you know, just moving into the neighborhood. And she, and she gets really fixated on stopping that. <laughs> partially because it shares the same name as like a, a strip club or something and yeah yeah partially because it, yeah, but mostly because she doesn't want things to change yeah and that's, so that's her story this season yeah that's that's kind of how her story starts moving forward as we said kimmy is going to school the guy she meets, it's like a possible romantic interest, is there, but he's going off to Columbia almost like right away. So she ends up getting in touch with Titus and, and introducing him to an app that lets them do kind of odd jobs. A real app, right. I can't remember what it was, but <laughs> it's an actual real app. But So they're going around doing kind of like odd jobs, and Kimmy takes a job where she's going to be going to Columbia, with, which is the school that the, uh, the guy's going to. But she's going there to like, you know, set up some gym equipment or something for, for somebody on campus, ends up going there and finding out that the person's roommate that she's setting up the equipment for is... Xan Xanth Xanthopy. <laughs> yeah, Xanth. Xanth, yeah. which is, as we all know, is... It's uh, Jacqueline's stepdaughter. There you go, yes. It's Jacqueline's stepdaughter, uh, who, who we actually haven't seen in a while. Uh, if you've been following <laughs> the show, she was largely missing from season two. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, she, but she returns in this episode, and she's a student at Columbia. And she actually, she had, her roommates are members of the uh, rowing team, the Columbia rowing team. And Xanthopy doesn't seem to be part of that clique because Xanthopy is not part of the rowing team and and she notes that she has a hard time getting along with her roommates because yeah, of that not, not only because of that but also because she's wealthy and yeah, that's and kind also, of become a disadvantage for her now like whereas it, her whole life had been an advantage now it's like she feels like she's you know people just look at her as like a snobby rich kid and don't give her a chance so she's kind of been a little humbled by all of that which is nice because she needed to be humbled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. But when Kimmy's setting up this rowing machine, 
all of her her unnatural strength and vigor from her time in the bunker, and also <laughs> yeah. just from her vigor of being such this like energetic woman, uh, uh, has basically just made her like ideal at rowing. <laughs> and so like now all these the the people on this rowing team like you know want her to to go to the school to transfer there and to. Uh, uh, join their, their rowing team. So that kind of just happens. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of just ha- Yeah. Basically, the coach of the rowing team basically forces it through. <laughs> Showing- she, she basically intimidates the dean. The dean's like cowering and hiding from her, basically. <laughs> She's threatening to like beat him up. Yeah. So she says, now Kimmy can go to, to Columbia because of that. Yeah. So she gets into Columbia basically because of her rowing capability. <laughs> and she encounters uh, Perry, who is kind of a little shocked and surprised that, you know, how hard he had to work to get into Columbia. <laughs> and she just like just heard of Columbia and now she's in it. <laughs> so he's a, he's a little kind of like upset about that. And they do a lot to play on that with like him working working all of these different jobs to try to get by and it hurt like constantly encountering him at these different jobs. Um, like he's like a bus driver and, uh, I think he was like working at a cafe or something. <laughs> so everywhere Kimmy's going with her new clique of rowers and, you know, being followed around by, uh, Zan, <laughs> uh, she's encountering Perry working his, all his various odd jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perry works a lot of odd jobs. <laughs> so while this is going on, Titus finds out that somebody ripped off his his style, his voice, everything for like a, a pharmaceutical company commercial. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He's infuriated. He's trying to like uh, uh, work something out based, you know, trying to get. Try, trying to get, uh, some, some pay for it or trying to get, you know, like, like get them to stop ripping him off. Um, he's not lucky in that. He's also not lucky in trying to get a job on Sesame Street <laughs> where he, he turns down the advances of, uh, he turns down the advances of a, uh, of a puppet. <laughs> yeah. So he doesn't get this job at Sesame Street either, so he's kind of really down and out. Yeah, he also... Apparently, you get on Sesame Street, you have to you have to sleep with a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> he also visited his, his, boy, his old boyfriend, Mikey, or, like, was going to visit him. Oh, yeah. He saw him with, an, with another man, which leads to a great segment in the second episode. Where, a uh, parody Titus of lemonade, is, yeah. He's, he's lemonading, as he puts it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a parody of lemonade. It's great. He gets all decked up in yellow. He's got a bat. <laughs> it's going down the street, yeah. He's going down the street. <laughs> and he just basically bashes in, uh, Mikey's window in his truck. <laughs> and bang, and confronts Mikey, you know, about what he saw. Mm. And Mikey's like, he's just a friend. We just play video games and stuff, but Titus is warning him that, you know, it's the 90s, everyone's gay, or like it's festive. <laughs> and he said it's the 90s, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the, clearly the guy's like interested in him, and then because of that, he's like, Mikey's cheating on him. So, yeah, so you have that situation, and then, like, Titus has a lot of dense story in this season. (laughs) So many different angles that they've gone on with Titus's story. I think Uh, Titus has, like, the most story of anybody this season. Yeah. They really focus on Titus. Because also somewhere, (laughs) also somewhere around this time, when Kimmy is doing the odd job at Columbia to set up the the rowing equipment, uh, Titus does an odd job singing for this, like, weird conspiracy theorist mention like how like uh these odd jobs happened because uh because basically kimmy finds out about a phone app where where Mm -hmm. where like where like people like post jobs and then other people using the app just like elect to do them yeah well it's it's a real app it's task rabbit i believe which is the task oh that's a real app i thought that was like made up for the show i had no idea no no there's a real app i don't i don't know if they changed the name or not but there's a there's a real app that 
does that. <laughs> okay. So there are a that. few, but and yeah, Titus Titus takes up a job uh doing vocal vocals for, for this musician. Uh, in quotation who marks has, like, musician. <laughs> yeah, in quotation marks musician. Uh who has like some uh yeah, who has some pretty out there uh, political views. <laughs> <laughs> He's a full and, and on the conspiracy fun, theorist and the, weirdo. <laughs> and, and and the funny thing is, like, 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 even though he's like saying all this insane shit, like, it doesn't phase Titus. He just like rolls with it, no matter how <laughs> how insane it gets. <laughs> Like, like Titus just does not care about the content of what he's singing. <laughs> <laughs> he's and singing the, some things the, that are like very against like his uh, positions, and uh, what yes. he ends up the the hit song they end up recording. But well, you, you is, find out that Titus Titus is not a very political person, apparently, because yeah. he apparently does not give give a crap. Um, <laughs> but but then but then we he comes across a song that completely and wholly offends him and makes him question the entire endeavor completely and they kind of leave you in suspense as to what what was so awful to to make titus to you know what was so awful to elicit that that from titus they leave you in suspense with that for a while and then then they come back to it and and it's just this goofy <laughs> boobs in california song. you know like everything else to that point had been like this hyper political like alex jones style like yeah conspiracy theorist com- kind of conspiracy theory like political commentary type stuff and then and then you get to boobs in california uh which <laughs> which is this is this is what horrified titus <laughs> <laughs> and it's just about it's just about loving boobs in California. Yeah. <laughs> Tit- Titus eventually agrees to do it anyway. Um but like after so he he sings a song and then after he's done he like has to like throw up in a bucket twice. <laughs> <laughs> So that's kind of what's going on with Titus at that point. Um, meanwhile, Jacqueline's, uh, boy, her new, now boyfriend, Russ, uh, ends up getting kind of like, she meets his family and his family owns the Washington Redskins and his family's horrible. They're just like the, the worst type of like entrenched wealth, like white people you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> and they treat Russ like absolute shit. They're, they're like, uh, they're, they're like, they're like a big parody of like ultra conservative rich white people you know yeah. <laughs> and, and they, they treat russ like so poorly because he's like gross <laughs> yeah, like he yeah he's gross and probably a liberal <laughs> you know yeah. I mean, he's like yeah. <laughs> you know so, but then like so, when yeah. they're leaving from from visiting his family he ends up getting like run over <laughs> Uh, basically by somebody who doesn't care that he's running over him because he's so ugly. <laughs> yeah. and it's this whole idea of like how much of a sad sack he is, like how much people just don't give a shit about him because of him being gross, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like he gets run over. He gets sent to like to the hospital. Um, um, his family sees an opportunity in getting him married off to Jacqueline while he's unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> while, he, while he's unconscious. Like they basically want to get him married to Jacqueline. Um and so and so they do it while he's unconscious, like very quick, like like they rush it, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just so that they they think that they can reason with her to to kind of uh, rest whatever level of control he has um, in you know the family's money, right? Right. Uh, so they, they have more they ba- control. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they whatever level of interest he has in the family fortune, they think they could they think they could use Jacqueline to to gain more control over it. And Jacqueline kind of sees an opportunity there to um, change the name of the Washington Redskins if she kind of goes along with it. 
which is, you know, as we know, Jacqueline's Native American. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which was one of the funnier twists in the first season. <laughs> yeah, she takes it upon herself to get the name of the Redskins changed, because now she's married into the family that owns the, the, the team. Mm -hmm. And so she makes that her crusade, basically. Meanwhile, so uh, Ru Russ's brother is coming on to her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she tries to use Titus. Uh, there's this hilarious thing where she tries to use Titus to like to 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 basic to basically get Russ's brother off of her back. Um, except it doesn't work because instead of just backing off when Titus shows up, he basically he basically takes it like as a challenge and he like challenges Titus for her. Because he thinks Titus is straight and <laughs> is going yeah, for he her think, too. Yeah, because Titus is pretending to be straight because Titus is pretending to be in a relationship with her already and like that doesn't deter russ's brother <laughs> you know he just he just sees that as like a challenge to overcome <laughs> yeah so m more titus story basically <laughs> yeah titus more titus star story basically basically we this is this is where we see a, a large uh, a larger relationship forming between jacqueline and titus who mm -hmm. who you know who are two characters who didn't interact much in the previous two seasons so they didn't have a much of a relationship with each other but now but now you see them they're they're interacting more and they're starting to there's those two characters are starting to form a deeper relationship with each other to the point where uh Jacqueline at the end of the season basically proposes to Titus that she's going to be his manager. Mm -hmm. But we'll get to some of that stuff later. Uh right. because this storyline also kind of leads to uh, Jacqueline uh, basically drugging Russ's brother and trying to trick him into thinking she slept with him. We'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to say around the same time, or just a little bit before this, I believe, again with Titus, we have uh, uh, um, Lillian and Titus, uh, because Titus ends up with scurvy because <laughs> he doesn't eat any fruit. <laughs> and so there's kind of like a few funny bits of them trying to get him fruit, like trying to find it in the city, and they end up having to go to a like out of their many failed attempts, they end up having to go to the like Whole Foods like knockoff place. Yeah, and oh my, it's funny because like like they're selling like uh, oranges, but they're like Nerf balls. <laughs> 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 or they're like they're plushies or something. They're, that's hilarious. So yeah, so uh, Titus is going is, is there, and and, and that kind of carries into when he visits um, Jacqueline because he's like eating all her fruit when he's there. <laughs> <laughs> to recover from a scurvy, but um, but before that, yeah. So he's in this this Whole Foods type place. He's uh, uh they're trying to get fruit. He's talking to with Lily, Lillian and and Artie begin talking, and you you end up seeing that that Artie doesn't kind of have the animosity to Lillian that Lillian has towards Artie. And Artie ends up revealing that, you know, he kind of came from nothing too in the, in, in like an old community like that. Like right. where, 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 where he's trying to add this, this place and that he's trying to help the community. And Lillian begins to kind of start taking that in, but isn't quite sold yet. Meanwhile, Kimmy has a little diversion that's kind of, it's really funny, but it's just like this weird, like, diversion that kind of happens, like, in the middle of a thing where she gets contacted by some FBI agents because one of her fellow bunker mates has, like, started her own cult. And they're, they're trying to, like, talk her down, like, without trying to avoid, like, a Waco situation with this cult. Oh, right. And it, it's really funny because she's trying to, like, prove that women can do everything man, men can. So she took a bunch of, of child husbands. <laughs> like, like a cult leader would take child wives, you know? <laughs> but all they do is, like, she ends up basically being, like, their mom, like, making them sandwiches and <laughs> taking care of them as they play video games. And <laughs> so she, like, just hates it and she's trying to like deal with all these kids and she decides that she's just gonna like you know blow up the whole place and go out in a blaze of glory and Kimmy's trying to kind of stop her from doing that um which is really funny yeah <laughs> that was pretty hilarious actually what was really funny was the FBI like backing off whenever 
were like they were worried they defended her or something. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it basically became like she was she, she she was like she was like you know she she, she was like basically like why, why can't a woman run a cult just as good as a man can? <laughs> <laughs> and the FBI were treating her very much like a woman, like, like yeah, they were like them in the old they were days, like being like, like like oh no she's crying we got to very back sexist. Off. There's a, there's another uh, side story with uh, Kimmy where she starts seeing a therapist. Uh, but basically, it's it's more like the therapist is seeing Kimmy because it turns out she she's played by Tina Fey and she's an out of control drunk. The majority of that was last season. What's that? No, that was this season, wasn't? That was last no. season. I'm getting yeah, my well, seasons majority of that mixed was last up. Season. You're getting it mixed up because because she reencounters her. You you yeah she reencounters her this season. You know why I got that mixed up? It's because I basically finished season two right right up to before season three premiered. So I basically <laughs> finished season two you. and started season three. So it kind of blended together for me. <laughs> it's all season twenty three to you. <laughs> it is. It's it's it, it's all one season to me. Actually, there's there is there aren't three seasons. There's just you know all these episodes. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. That was season two. My bad. They did bring her back, though, and we'll get to they that. They did. Uh, but, um, so... Kimmy's back at Columbia doing her thing, and she learns about a storm coming, and so she decides that she's gonna, like, basically create a positive bunker <laughs> in her in her apartment, like, get all of her friends locked down so that they're safe in her apartment, but she's kind of, like, falling into these kind of bunker ro- rules that she hated so much, and she's trying desperately to fight against that. In doing that, like, other stories start coming together, because little Lillian and Artie are now a couple, and yep. they're kind of in her in her uh, her uh, apartment bunker with her, um, as well as Titus, who finally, under the pressure of everything going on there, finally ends up revealing his dark secret about the cruise ship, which is that he thinks he ate. Is it Diane Warwick that he thinks he ate? Who was Diane Warwick? Now, who was it? It was uh, Dion Warwick. Yeah, yeah I was believe it was. Dion yeah, Warwick. Was. That he, he believes he ate her. <laughs> Well, well, he he makes it up. He he doesn't believe he ate you because because that turns out to be a lie. He's lying at first about that uh, because he's, he doesn't he's want in several he lies. Doesn't, he he goes <laughs> in several lies because he doesn't want to talk about what actually happened, you know. And then and then when he's confronted, when when they realize that he there's there's genuinely a problem and that something happened, he makes up that ridiculous Dion Warwick story because 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 he sees he's still trying to avoid saying what happened on that ship or what happened with that ship and everybody pretty much and then he says the ship sank you know he, yeah. yeah well yeah well yeah, that was part of the premise the ship sank and he was on a life raft with Dion Warwick and he ate her and he, and they pretty much they buy it until the hurricane rolls in and everything and they're preparing for the the hurricane and then uh Kimmy sees on the news news of that ship the ship is docking because of the hurricane and that's and when Dion Kimmy realized doing a uh... and Dion Warwick is doing a fundraising event <laughs> because of the hurricane so she's alive and the ship ship is okay so Kimmy figures out that Titus was lying about that the whole time and she confronts him again and then we finally get the real story of what happened which is to to make it short uh uh Titus like tried to intentionally poison Dion Warwick so he could get more stage time on the stage <laughs> show but but he ends up accidentally like poisoning everybody on that ship <laughs> <laughs> And that's what really happens. It, like bas- basically, basically spraying uh, her with pool water from the thing yeah, bas- and it's coming, with coming pool through water the from the hot tub. <laughs> with from the hot tub, yeah. Because basically, uh, the pool water is very. Like, they mentioned the pool water is just like toxic <laughs> <laughs> on just cruise ships in general. <laughs> on cruise ships in general, go near the water. <laughs> 
So, and, and, ba- uh, and basically what happened was Dion Warwick got sick from it, um, and that led to Titus filling in for her, and he got stage time, and once he got that taste of it, once Dion Warwick got better, Titus didn't want to give that up, and so he tries to, uh, he tries to poison her and make her sick again so he can get more stage time, and he ends up not only poisoning her, but, like, everybody on the ship, because the spray goes through the vents and gets all over the place. And so that's what really happened on that ship. So Titus ended up kind of like escaping away from there, and that's how he ended up washing up on shore. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how he ended up washing up on shore. <laughs> uh, so while this is going on, also um, Jacqueline's boyfriend Russ kind of wakes up, and he's going to have his bandages removed, and they're basically warning him that he's going to be like a thousand times grosser than he was before. <laughs> That, like, he's going to have stink sacks in his skin and, and, like, just all these kind of things. And she's going to be having to constantly take care of him. And she's really kind of scared about that. She ends up practicing on her friend, played by Amy Sedaris. Yeah. <laughs> and, but she can't make it through, like, a full, like, like more than a full day of doing that. And she ends up going to the hospital and, and, and confessing her fears about it. And the uh, um, nurse is like, wait a minute, you took care of that lady? <laughs> that lady's a pain. If you could love her for a, a day then you could last you could do to anything you'll be fine <laughs> and uh they end up taking off uh russ's bandages and surprise surprise it kind of had the reverse effect because he was already this really gross person so somehow being compressed and everything that happened to him now he's like hot <laughs> played by a completely different actor and uh jacqueline kind of like thinks this is her re- her reward for um becoming a good person yeah yeah basically <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of uh, uh all goes along around the time that she's trying to change the name of the Washington Redskins with uh the family and they are uh, um she she tries to blackmail the the brother uh, uh Russ's brother uh because he had said a bunch of stuff that they had accidentally recorded cuz she was trying to record like a sex tape kind of thing to like blackmail him with and she ended up recording him talking about all this stuff to Titus that he he shouldn't have said <laughs> yeah <laughs> And they were going to use that to, like, blackmail him. And she, you know, went to the meeting all, like, you know, happy she was going to, like, expose, you know, him to the rest of the board. And that in order to keep that quiet, they would change the name. But uh, everybody there basically was in on a plot to give up the brother to, like, a- a- as a representative or somebody who worked with ISIS or something. <laughs> so they basically, like, framed him and got him sent to Guantanamo Bay so that anything that he said would just be meaningless yeah (laughs) (laughs) pretty much so she feels kind of defeated but she ends up going back to uh uh, the meeting with uh with uh everybody right as they're about to end their meeting but see they have this weird thing that happens at their meetings where whenever the the national anthem plays they all have to stand up and listen and so she doesn't think she can make it in time before they'll they'll break from the meeting um and so what she ends up deciding to do is she calls up Titus and has him perform over the phone with with her with her parents holding the phone up to a loudspeaker uh perform the national anthem and milk it for everything he's got yeah <laughs> which he's like just super jazzed to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so while he's doing that like everybody in the meeting's about to stop and he starts singing it and like so they all stand up and start saluting and then the one woman in the office like we don't have a flag she like rips open her jacket and she's wearing like a american flag bra <laughs> <laughs> and they're all sitting there waiting for that. She gets up. Oh my it god, makes that it was up hilarious. There time, and uh ends up proposing an idea that they actually take to, which is that all the, the merchandising for the Washington Redskins, why it's successful through them is because of all the people protesting burning their merchandise. <laughs> they buy merchandise and then burn it and then they buy more merchandise and burn it and she proposes to them that it's that that's a good business strategy except that Native Americans are a very small population and that they could reach bigger markets by changing it and and what they end up doing is changing the name to the Washington Gun 
takers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Washington gun takers. Because because Jacqueline manages to, to convince them that if people are pissed off enough, they'll buy they'll buy merchandise just to destroy it. <laughs> and, then, and then the people that actually like support those movements on the other side will will buy the to wear it to make their political statement. So she basically changes the entire game of football because all of the teams end up with these other names like that <laughs> that are intentionally meant to anger people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot what the other one is that they kept mentioning. It was like the, there was another team name they kept mentioning that was really funny too, that they had changed. Um, but anyways, so that's, that goes on. Um, then Jacqueline's got her, her boyfriend back who's now, now attractive and everything. And she feels like him being attractive and her getting him back is like her, her reward for everything she's done. But, um, he starts kind of changing in that, he, you know, now that he's being kind of treated nicely and stuff like what made him a good person was basically all the shit he went through in his life and now that he's being kind of like treated well like he's kind of you know like he's starting to lose a little bit of sight of that so she decides to to invite his family to visit him to remind him of like where he came from and and what happened in his life that made him the way he is unfortunately now his family is all too happy to like welcome him with open arms now that he's attractive because the whole reason they hated him was because he was gross and ugly so now he's all like yeah now loving he's like, his family yeah like he, he he's handsome and everything and so his family like basically takes him back with open arms and now because his family loves him for the first time in his life even if it's like super completely superficial he doesn't care he he'll he's gonna take it and so basically he ditches jacqueline in favor of his family <laughs> and jacqueline realizes that you know him being attracted now wasn't her reward for becoming a good person. Her reward was becoming a good person. And his reward was becoming attractive and getting the one thing that had eluded him all of his life and, and everything that comes with that. So now Jacqueline's kind of like doesn't have a purpose. So Jacqueline ends up uh, helping Titus in order to kind of distract herself as a, a way to, for him to kind of try to hook back up with Mikey his old boyfriend by uh, having him perform a show because they end up tracking down they, they end up finding that that boobs in California song has become like this huge hit on the radio yeah, <laughs> for some reason <laughs> and they they end up confronting the the guy that Titus performed the songs on and he he's trying to deny it but he's got like all this stuff that shows that he has money now yeah uh, he's trying so. to say he didn't make any money off of it but like <laughs> and so so Titus said because he did the vocals he's entitled to a cut which he was being denied Jacqueline Jacqueline tag tags along with Titus basically basically encouraging Titus to get his cut mm -hmm. and to basically like and and also Jacqueline gets them a gig on on a ship specifically for the purpose of uh <laughs> of getting uh Titus the opportunity to to get back uh Mikey who is going to be on the ship Who's going to be on the ship? So ironically, Titus ends up back on a ship performing. <laughs> Before we talk about that, though, I gotta say, uh, how much do you like seeing Titus all dressed up, getting out of a limo, walking a peacock? <laughs> that, yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> Titus is the best. He, he always, like, comes up with the best things. <laughs> it's just one of them. Trying to, to show off his wealth to Mikey. Uh, it was really funny. But, yeah, so Titus performs on the ship, but ends up kind of pissing off. He, he, he makes a declaration of love for Mikey who basically says that, you know, he's happy now with who he has. Then Titus basically ends up getting everybody on the ship to turn on him. And he and Jacqueline end up off of the boat, <laughs> washed up the same way that he was at the beginning of the season, to which Titus tells Jacqueline, like, well, I told you this is how I get off boats. <laughs> But it always ends up that way. Meanwhile, Lillian and Artie are completely dating and they're serious, but Lillian finds out that Artie is dying. He's got like a heart condition mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a heartbeat, but because it has blood continually pumping through his heart, but it's a temporary solution. And he's got enough wealth that he could basically force his way through like a rich person can and get higher up on the donor list to get a heart. But he's, he's somebody that came up from the bottom and is a kind person 
person and he doesn't do that for that very reason. But that kind of frustrates Lillian because, you know, now she's got like a guy again and she doesn't want him to die. And so she's feeling kind of helpless and she wants Kimmy to help her. So she's kind of like waiting for Kimmy to basically come to her rescue and be this example of positivity. Meanwhile, uh, Kimmy ends up getting kicked out of, uh, Columbia around yep. the same time one of her fellow students, Zach, was quitting. And she gives Zach the advice that, you know, of, of like doing his own thing and, 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 uh, uh, taking, taking his power, you know, like, like making his own choice and doing it on his own. And then she goes into the office, finds out that she's kicked out of Columbia, um, because her grades were so bad. <laughs> she ends up deciding, you know, that she wants to become a crossing guard again. She, she finally, de- yeah, she decides that her true calling is to be a crossing guard, and so she she goes through with it. She she goes she's to, acing the test. Yeah, she's acing the test. The test is like really ridiculously easy. Like you have to be brain dead to like fail that test anyway. <laughs> but there's <laughs> like, like thousands like, of questions. What, what, <laughs> what, what, one of the, one of the, like the questions was, why do you want to be a crossing guard? And one of the answers on the multiple choice was to be the master of, to, no, to be the boss of cars. <laughs> 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 yeah so and there's like the questions are really simple but there's like thousands of them like you yeah. see on the bottom of the page this is like like page like two of a thousand or something oh you know what? She, i did i didn't notice that because like it only shows her like answering like pi- five of them or something yeah yeah they speed through the process but apparently there were just a ton of them and she so she went through them all <laughs> she aced the test which really impresses the police officer that's administrating it but there's another person that also aced the test well, I not a person, a robot. <laughs> and so now Kimmy has to face off with the robot uh, in the practical exam. And Kimmy ends up in a situation where uh, she could either let a, a, a bus run into a child or run into a, a group of people. I can't remember exactly what it was. And she flashes back to the ethics she learned in Columbia and instead, like, push pulls the bus towards her, like, has it directed towards her to, like, sacrifice herself in place of either one. And so then she becomes the pick for the crossing guard, except they do a background check and find out that she's married to a sex offender, uh, the reverend, because she didn't do that, sign the divorce paper. So her screwing with the reverend at the beginning of the season to get some revenge ended up kind of screwing her over. Right. Because she's still attached to him in name. So, um, so she lost this job. She can't get it now. Uh, and so she's like defeated and she goes back and, and Lillian talks to her and Lillian expresses that she was waiting for Kimmy to give her hope, but realizes that Kimmy was, you know, that she's the one that needs to give Kimmy hope. So she goes back to Columbia with her hammer that she carries everywhere <laughs> to, uh, to talk to the dean to get Kimmy back in. But while she's there, she ends up meeting uh, um Zach who tells her that uh, um tells her that he has a, a job position for Kimmy. So they go and they pick up Kimmy in a DeLorean because Zach's like a geek, so of course he has a DeLorean. Yeah, of course he has a Del- he's actually like wearing like a Marty McFly style vest too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, like, so perfectly set up. Oh, my God. But, but they, yeah. they end up picking up Kimmy, and he wants Kimmy to work for him because he's actually now, like, got this massive company, like a dot-com-style business, but he's not good with people, and he doesn't have emotional intelligence. And so he wants Kimmy as somebody with emotional intelligence to fill that role for him. So, right. uh, so you have this kind of setup of, like, okay, now you have Kimmy has purpose. Yeah, we find out what Kimmy's purpose is. We find out where her true talent is, and that wasn't something she got from doing, like, a career quiz. Uh, but we find out that t- Kimmy has high emotional intelligence, which mm-hmm. she didn't even know was a thing beforehand. <laughs> but now she's, she's found a sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's meanwhile, her arc <laughs> for the season. Meanwhile, we talked about uh, before uh, Jacqueline and um, Titus washing up off that ship, and the whole experience of all of that ended up giving Jacqueline purpose, where she realized that what she could do is is be an agent for Titus, as you you'd mentioned earlier in, in the podcast. That right. ends up kind of fulfilling her purpose, and it also finally gives Titus a path to, towards his purpose 
which has always been to be an entertainer, so, but he's just never been able to manage it properly. Right. So basically, so basically, we we come to the end of the season. We find our main cast of characters sort of finding, discovering their purposes, mm-hmm. which 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 previously which previously they didn't seem to have a clear a clear purpose. They were they were a bit aimless and kind of wandering. And it's in, it's it's I think it's going to be interesting to see how how that kind of changes changes the show if if the if if the if these purposes remain or if you know because i think i think part part of the zaniness that dominates show kind kind of came out kind of came across in the fact that these characters were were a bit aimless and just kind of taking things day by day uh now that these mm-hmm. characters have a purpose how is that going to affect the show it's going to be interesting to see going forward and beyond actually. that they have sources of income yes they have sources of <laughs> income also important Lillian has a wealthy beau. Yeah. Kimmy has has a cush job, and uh, Titus, Titus, and Jacqueline maybe. have a means towards making money off of what he's doing. Yeah, has a means towards so that would be interesting too. Yep, and uh, Titus is gonna keep making money off of uh, uh, boobs in California. I assume. As yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, boobs in California. Uh, that the highlight of the season, right there. I watched the music <laughs> video, <laughs> and that came like right after like his lemonade too. So that was like a one-two punch. Cause like, yeah. cause like the, the previous episode had the lemonade parody and then the very next episode they did boobs in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they made excellent use of Titus this season. He was like the real star of the season, I, I feel. He was a real star of the season. Another thing that they revealed about Titus this season was that he is an incredibly selfish person. Um, mm-hmm. I, that, that gets brought up, uh, that gets revealed to Titus. I don't know if that gets resolved at all. They make movement towards it, so it's not that he's no, no longer a selfish person, but that he's learned that he is selfish and that he needs to make work that towards, he needs to work towards resisting it. that. One of the best episodes is the episode where Titus basically <laughs> it's so it's so silly. Titus basically schemes to schemes to use a ga- a convenience store w- restroom uh, <laughs> be- because the owner like uh, played by <laughs> the owner Ray Liotta. played by Ray Liotta like in insists that Titus, like, that customers buy something if they're going to use the restroom, and Titus doesn't want to do that. So Titus, like, comes up with a scheme where he has, like, Kimmy, Kimmy distract the owner while he uses his restroom every day. And, uh, yeah, and like, he, Kimmy he, he brings makes a up, copy of the key, and yeah. He makes a copy. Kimmy brings up, why doesn't he just use the bathroom in the apartment? And Titus says, you know, that that's not for that. <laughs> Yeah, the bathroom it, it, in their apartment is for like self reflection and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the mornings and, and applying makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Titus apparently not only uses this bathroom in this convenience store, but just wrecks it every time. <laughs> and so it's this huge deal for Ray Liotta's character trying to like constantly having to work on this bathroom with Titus wrecking it constantly. And uh, so there's a whole kind of subplot about that and about him kind of finding out that Kim me and Titus know each other, him realizing that Kimmy's constantly in the store when uh, somebody keeps visiting the bathroom, and eventually putting it together that the two of them were working together, and then he put them both on the wall of people being banned from his store. Yeah, pretty much. And Kimmy ends up on the Kimmy and Titus end up on the wall. Also, uh, also in that episode, Titus has an awkward encounter with Mikey, which leads to Titus's desire to get back with Mikey, even though Titus mm-hmm. is basically the one who dumped him in the first place. Yeah, he dumped him, but he dumped him with kind of a somewhat noble cause, which right. was that he himself had been dumped in the same way. Like he had, you know, the first person that after he came out that he was with, he had spent all this time with and then he was dumped and he realized that that opened up the world to him that he was able to realize that he shouldn't just be with the person that you know discovered him or helped him discover himself but that he could you know be whatever he wanted and so he's kind of realizes that he's that person for Mikey and he wants to uh, um, like change that he realizes that after uh, you know and, and decides to take Mikey to the house of these people that that uh, that this couple that one of them was the one that that had dumped Titus in the same way. So he dumped him kind of altruistically, but then decided that he wanted him back later in the season. 
yeah, part yeah. of Titus's constant struggle with being selfish. <laughs> But that's, uh, I believe that's pretty much it for the season. I mean, there was other stuff that happened, other funny stuff, but we don't have to just kind of go over every single joke and minute detail <laughs> of, of the series. That's basically the main plot lines and, uh, the, 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 the kind of standout moments of the season. Um, so if you haven't watched, uh, Kimmy Schmidt yet or this season of Kimmy Schmidt yet, why are you listening to this podcast? First off, <laughs> where we warned you ahead of time that we'd be spoiling the whole thing but second off uh yeah it, it's a very funny show and uh yeah, watch you should it. watch it it's one of the best half hour comedies on on any any channel right now and it's on netflix so like if you have a netflix subscription just go watch it like yeah. seriously like like if if you like zany comedies then this should be right up your alley and how else are you going to get your Titus Andromedon fix? Uh, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's it for uh, our podcast today. Coming up next week on TV, we're looking ahead now, uh, Friday, July 7th, 2017, by the time this is up, this will already be available, Castlevania on Netflix. Uh, will and I are looking forward to this, and we will be talking about that a bit next week. I'm not sure how much we're going to have watched by that point. We'll, we'll kind of play it by ear and see where Will and I both are on that series, because we also have Twin Peaks coming back next week to talk about. Uh, right. But Castlevania... July 7th. Uh, on Wednesday, July 12th, Salvation comes to CBS. This is, CBS has been doing this for a while now, where during the summer, they do some kind of, like, higher concept shows. Uh, they did uh, Zoo, which is one about these animals going crazy. They did uh, that that one with Halle Berry. I can't remember what it was called. That was, like, a high concept one. They did that Stephen King one, the Under the Dome. And Brain Dead, which was the one Will and I talked about on the podcast quite a bit. Um, right. That we really liked. Uh, their new one is called Salvation, and it's basically Armageddon, the TV series. <laughs> it's basically about an asteroid about to collide with Earth and the attempts to y use a brain trust to figure out how to stop it or how to, you know, have humanity survive it. On that same day, Wednesday, July 12th, Suits returns to USA. On Thursday, July 13th, Hooten and the Lady comes to the CBW. This is a British series about an American man and a British woman who are kind of like treasure hunters. So like a team of like treasure hunters, adventurers. Oh, okay. So Interesting. It's kind of a, looks like it's a kind of fun show. Kind of a little like maybe a, a, a more lighthearted Uncharted if it was a TV show, I guess. <laughs> Right. And then on Friday, July 14th, Friends from College comes to Netflix. This is a lighthearted comedy about, you know, people that are kind of getting close to entering their 40s, but they knew each other in college and they're still a little bit immature and about their lives of reconnecting with each other while trying to become adults. So pretty basic um, premise. <laughs> You've probably seen a bunch of times on various sitcoms, uh, but this one's on Netflix. So that's what's coming ahead in the next week. Until then, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can reach Will on Twitter. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel as well as our site, tventhusiast.com. And you can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. Just look up the weekly set or TV Enthusiast. Either one should work. The entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel, as well as other content, including our Top 10 Tuesday videos, um, the impressions I did for American Gods while that was on, and I'll be doing something along those lines for Game of Thrones when that's on. And, uh, yeah, so other stuff there as well. You can go back in the backlog and watch our impressions of past seasons of Game of Thrones or our, you know, discussions of episodes of Hannibal Season 3 and watch along with them. Watch the episodes and tune into our discussion about the episode. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so see you. Ev see everybody next week. We'll be talking about Twin Peaks in Castlevania. Till then, night, night. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to the Weekly Set at tventhusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set podcast for more.